what John's going to do, he's got the RTK on the Phantom 4. Yeah. And he's also got the Patrice. So, what, what's the end result? What do you, what? Um, I think it'll be, it'll be interesting to see the, how the results compare. Like, you know, with three, three different, um, uh, different, uh, different flights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, if I set our... If I initially did this section... Oops, I just dragged it out. My bad. Obviously, we're looking at a slightly old aerial photo. It's not that old, though, is it? Um, so, if I did that at 30 metres... Yeah. Do you, um, do you know what the fall would be down? Um, so, I dragged it out. Would it be about... Uh, 80 meters that way. Yeah. Do you know what the fall would be at the moment, roughly? So we are so standing. Check you're getting the good GSD. We're at uh, 135. Yep. And you know that's 109 there. Okay. So at that point we're going to end up at 1.6 centimeters of pix, and there will be at 80 at 0.8 centimeters of pix. Yep. Does that sound good? Yeah. 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 Sweet. So 30 meters. Are you? That's that's probably about 40. Yeah. Lower than that, but I'll double check on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just put it up. There you go. I'll just um. What I'll probably do is I'll just manually fly it up there and double check the height of those trees. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. This this way. That's a good idea. Think of yeah. That. Edgysoft is the other software that comes with the and, and you've done that, that you said it was about the same? Well actually the Falcon can't go with pretty much any software, it's just uh, yeah. that Paul Hogan guys elsewhere in the country are already using Edgysoft. So there's sort of internal support there But SciScan doesn't support Falcon because it doesn't have that camera camera uh, uh, so the, details. The, the limitation we have is that we've got a DJI range that Again, we don't know if we support this yet because it's uh, so well, yeah, um, You mean like size scan? Oh, it should be the same because it's it, it does it has the camera specs. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not listed. It's just not listed, and the, the drone's not listed. Yeah. So I don't know you like. the trees below us there. Yeah. Um, looks lower than it is. <laughs> okay, sweet. Yeah, sweet. it's actually, it's actually miles above. Um, See? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the easiest way, just fly up, check with your camera. Yeah. Otherwise you sit there going, nah, it's definitely 45. It's not. Anyway, so that's all good. Uh, it's good to double check. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Piece of cake, John. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Cool. Alrighty. It's got obstacle avoidance anyway, so it wouldn't have let me fly into a tree. Oh yeah? <laughs> okay. But, yeah, I don't like trusting that. Trees in the wind are a problem for the obstacle. Oh yeah, I know. I, I never trust obstacle avoidance. It's just, even though I know it works, why would I like intentionally put my drone at risk? Yeah. Well, we have one guy do that. It's like I'm going to test out the obstacle avoidance into a tree, yeah. and it sort of bounced around a bit for a little bit, and then he stopped paying attention while he was looking at something on the screen, and it went into the tree, and it fell into the only water with a kilometre, which is a pool about. Three or four meters 
started. That started, yeah. So, um, so the planning is done in... Um, planning is all done on the control area. Oh, yeah. So I can and put paying off files if I prefer. Yeah. And there'll also be, um, there'll, there's going to be an online platform that's an option where you can do all your planning back at the office and actually deploy it to different drones. Yeah. Um, what's quite cool about this is you can actually link five drones to one controller yeah. and have them all deployed onto one job, but then they talk to each other about divvying up the job. Is that so, safe? Um, it's safe. Um, it's not legal in New Zealand. To do that, you'd need one observer per drone. Yeah. It's, that's the only way of doing it legally, but still, yeah. it's um, the technology is there is the point. Yeah. Um, the speed's a little slow just because of the uh, ground starting distance. It's limited us to two meters a second just because of the blur. Um, uh, what I might see is if I can increase that speed once it gets further down the face. Yeah. Yeah. Just because obviously it's working on um, not having more than 0.2 centimeters of blur right now. Yeah. Maybe 0.6. So the program actually tells you how, how fast you can fly. Uh, yeah, you know, so it's automatically battery. doing the rule of thirds kind of thing in oh, the background. Wow. I can change the speed. The speed we're going to change it. I'll change it in flight. I might not be able to change it in flight, but I can change it in the planning. So anytime I can see where it is on the job. Yeah. Um, I can also look at the camera view. Um, if I'm not happy with the camera settings, I can change them on the fly. Yeah. Um, I can pop into there and change them. So what at the I'm, moment you're using shutter speed? Yep. Yeah, so I've locked off, just because it's a darkish day, I've locked it off at a thousand. Yep. Usually, I'd, like, so I can get a bit faster, I'd go to a 1600th or a 1250th. Yep. Um, but I've oh, put yeah. a negative 0.7 EV on there. Yep. I just do that to get a bit more contrast on the ground. Yep. Yeah. So once you adjust these settings, it actually will uh, tell you the speed of the, of the flight. It calculates the maximum speed on the basis of the height. Yeah. Now, it's assuming the height above our takeoff point. Yeah. So obviously, when we're further down there, yeah. it's going to be too slow for what it could be doing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just going to assume a third blur, yeah. a third of your GSD is blur, yeah. and set the maximum speed accordingly. Oh, nice. Yeah. Fly the face of the camera at 45 degrees instead. Oh, uh, for this for this flight? No, yeah. no. Yeah, okay. No, I didn't do any oblique flight. Um, because to me, from my understanding, the oblique flight is actually just to for the buildings and stuff. Mm. Um, because you know, if you have enough overlap, it's pretty yeah, much the same. Yeah, if you have result. enough overlap, it's to be honest, uh, it's more for people trying to do as built and things where they don't want the buildings to look all soupy uh, and they want it to actually look pretty. Yeah. So it serves no real useful purpose a lot of the time, yeah. other than that someone actually wants to use the model and put it in a brochure at some point. Uh, you know, that's yeah. often the reason. If you had, yeah. um, if you have some rock bases and you had cracks visible, yeah, that's the other the time. Other yeah. Then you'll get a much better model. Yeah. That's a uh, for, for our purpose, it's just basically volume comparison. Yeah. So. Yeah, it comes down to, are you interested in, um, are you just calculating volumes or do you actually need to be... Pretty much area photo and volume. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. then you're fine. If you're wanting to actually have some detail on the face, be it across the grocery or be it crack lengths and things yeah. like that, then you'd need to do a 45 degree. Yeah. So you've actually, you turn off RTK and you go to post-process mode. Okay. Now when it's doing that, it's then producing all of the files that you need to do post-processing. But DJI aren't releasing any post-processing software and they're making it pretty clear that you're on your own when it comes to that. All right. So they tell you everything, so they're exporting everything you need, so all of your camera angles and everything, the difference yeah. to the sensor from the antennae, all of those, that it's, everything's timestamped perfectly. All of that's taken care of, but you need to find some software that can do your post-processing after that. Um, you know I mean? Yeah, we've got the flower. The flower won't take it. The flower won't take it. Come close and it will be the first thing to try. Yeah. So flower have locked down their software to their units. Right, fair enough. <laughs> um, well, we could do it as a standard server on software, but I'm not sure how that would extend the improved uh, exifs. Uh, 
Exactly. And that's the thing, it's actually about producing those food excess. I believe it's really had some that you've made, mate, but whether it's any good, I don't know. Just a question about the uh, RTK. So the uh, images that Joe tag um, uh, of the RTK uh, they corrected already. Corrected already. Yeah. Okay. So if it, if you if you were flying, you know, 10 meters per second, does that get gets, uh, corrected or? Yeah. Oh yeah. So the images are corrected already. And the other good thing is, if I went and hit this controller behind Porticom or something and killed yeah. the RTK signal, yeah. it's going to carry on the job. But of course, it's got this RTK corrections. When you then import those into Pixel D, it does actually change the accuracy on those specific images. Yeah. So, so Pix is getting the correct accuracy for each image. You don't have to go, oh, I remember this bit of the job was missing it and then correcting it. Yeah. So, right, so when you when you import the photos, they're going to have all the exits. Yeah. Yeah. The exit should have an accuracy value on it. Oh, so wow. It's normally the five or ten meter. Yeah. Five meter horizontal, ten meter vertical. Yeah. So the RTK ones will be two or three centimeters or whatever they are. Yeah. And if there's a loss of the RTK, yeah. those ones will show up as five to ten plus uh, five plus ten or whatever yeah. the, the yeah. other yeah. setting is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, like we were talking about before, these ones will be held tight. Yeah. And these ones will have plenty of room to float yeah. because they're probably wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And uh, Pretty awesome. when I tested it, we did that on purpose. We hit the controller behind a porticom, right. lost signal, it carried on, did the top half of the job. And then because the photos were good enough and one end of the site was tied in, there was actually still no real error yeah. to worry about at the because points at the top end of the site. The stuff was already tied yeah. and tied. But we, we the stuff was got quite mean. We hadn't even circled it. We'd actually gone a whole third of the site without yeah. it at the top end, and it was still tied in nicely. We had enough overlap to. So later on, we're going to fly another one from the bottom. Is that correct? We can do. Yeah. Using the same. Probably be worth it. Different control there, because they wouldn't know that the other one used the M210 just so that it's got more options for the. Um. So yeah, the terrain follow. Um, Ideally, I'd need to have a map box. So what you could do with um, an app called uh, Map Pilot is if you had a chart for your site, you could build that into a map box, which would then be imported into that app on the terrain column site. And that would be the way to do it. Because the altitude model for that is really old. Um, so it's great if you're doing road and corridors, things like that. But if you want to do a quarry, it's still a no-go. So altitude following just isn't something that DJI have built in. Um, the only way it's been done is through other app manufacturers. The only way I'd, I'd recommend doing altitude following is if you've got your own model to the quarry model. Yeah. To turn it into something. Yeah. Trust anything else, particularly in a quarry where 10 metres different might be 50 metres in height. Yeah. Did you? I've been um, putting quite a bit of work into their survey site recently. It's rolling out a few, uh, like this new Enterprise GS Pro has come out. The setup's there. I'm clearly taking the sector very seriously. So I'm just going to keep heading them up saying I want to import a three dimensions of the alpha. There was some band that could pick a couple of the American that didn't sign the whole of the time. The, the camera spec from this one and the uh, matrice is pretty much the same, eh? Yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> it's frustrating because it looks small and it looks like you bought it at JB Hi-Fi yeah. for your kids to play with. Yeah. Um, yeah. As many people have. One day. so annoying. You turn up and your client's like, oh, that's all there is. Right, go. Cool. It's uh, 95% of you won't ever use it. And uh, what they've done with these is the camera calibration file, they've actually loaded it into every JPEG itself. Okay. So whereas with the cloud system you're important the calibration file separately at the end, um, it's sitting there and it's all in the EXIF. They've actually written it as a line of the JPEG, so you sort of open the JPEG and the notepad and you can view it. It's quite funny the way they've done it. Um, oh, yeah? But they're all pre-calibrated from the factory for that. 
Oh, wow. Okay. We're just trying to get clarification on Pixel D as to whether when they say it's fully compatible, it's actually using it yet. positioning accuracy it's good for power line use things like that yeah um, so we're not going to use those today so ignore that they wouldn't usually be there the smaller aircraft the 200 and the 210 don't have those in terms of the differences between the 200 and the 210 the 200 series would have one single gimbal at the front yeah whereas the 210 we can run two gimbals at once so we could run a thermal alongside a visual yeah and we can also mount a gimbal on the top and look upwards instead yeah um, so great for if you're looking under bridges things like that yeah Uh, one of the things I, uh, I noticed about the DJI aircraft is that it's, uh, the gimbal is quite smooth. So is that is that all through through all, all the models? Yes. Uh, part of the advantage of the um, DJI decided to make all their own gimbals was that they were able to miniaturize everything. Yeah. So they moved the image processing onto the drone itself, yeah. which means all they're doing is stabilizing the lens of the gimbal. So they cut down on the weight, yeah. you know, they managed to cut it down to everything and actually make it designed to the job wants to do as opposed to buying Sony and bolting onto the front of something and then trying to make it work. Yeah. So that's where they that's where they've improved on that. Yeah. You can do whatever you like, right? Not danger. That's the worst cross in history. Go pick up some other thing. That's fine, I'll do it. That'll do me. It's not massively critical. Secretly put as a check. More than a calibration. It's a first of any cross. Camera over there. Oh. Um, so it needs a few minutes to warm up time. Um, I generally say five, uh, sorry, ten. Five will probably do. You know. That's batteries right there. We have batteries. We got four rotors. We got two gim gimbal sets. And the third one could go at the top, facing upwards. Just avoid reaching over the PPK antenna wires. Initializer. Yeah. I do, yeah, yeah. And because it's got that eye view, it doesn't matter. It will sort it out. Well, it's in the post processing that we do the offsets.